Well, you know what? It was the beginning of legitimacy that uh, just that quick, you know, we were doormats in 69 when I got there. I remember the coach getting up saying, well, I'm hoping, this is George Wilson, just, well, I'm hoping for a 7-7 seven and seven season. And I was a rookie. I didn't know anything. I just, I got up right after him. I said, coach, with all due respect, if we have 14 games to play, let's go for 14-0. and 0. And if we lose the first one, let's go for 13-1. and 1. If we lose the next one, let's go for 12-2. and 2. But let us not hang out in the bean, the, in, in, in mediocrity here, in being mediocre. And he, he, he looked and they started saying, who the hell is this guy? He's coming down here talking this way. And we didn't reach mediocrity. We went 3-10-1. and one. So he was fired. Shula, in, in a very strange circumstance, became available. And Joe Robbie went up when uh, uh, Carol Rosenblum was on the Far East and he oakty doked uh, his son. And next thing you know, Shula was a coach down here. I think they had to give up a first round draft pick for him too. But obviously, Things changed. We went from if you if it was too hot with Wilson, we would go swimming instead of practice. With Shula, never had a drink of water in six years on the field. So the whole tempo changed. And I think bringing Warfield in and bringing in the concept of legitimacy in terms of what we were trying to accomplish, <clears throat> that was the beginning for us. Because keep in mind, the Dolphins were four years old when, when, when uh, Paul Warfield came. So it wasn't like this was a, a storied franchise. We, we, they had just come into existence, so they had no real relevant history of winning or losing, except they did lose up until the time when Shula came, and then that flipped it in 1970, and then, of course, the rest is history. Lloyd Mumford is, uh, was a cornerback then, he's a great player. He could cover anybody. Whenever the, the, the tough wide receivers were out, uh, on the opposite team, Lloyd was the one who would, who would cover these guys. He was 5'10", 175 pounds, but he could go. You know why he got so good? Because he had to cover Warfield in practice. <laughs> he said that's what made him a great defensive back, is learning how to play against Paul Warfield. Absolutely. You know what? And uh, clearly, Bringing him back after all of that is a tribute to, to the respect that they have for him as a player and him as a person. Uh, now, I don't know what, what possessed him to go back except for the fact that that's his home and that's, that was, that's, those were his roots were. And he had a great run here and he came here to help us. Uh, it wasn't like he started here like, like I did or like Zakik Zonk and Warfield did. Uh, but he ended up back in Cleveland because I think they respected him as a person and they respected him as a player and he's a great guy to start with. Paul Warfield to me is epitomizes the, the, the whole aspect of class. If these receivers today had the kind of class that this guy had, had back then and has now, then they, they would be a far more different game and it wouldn't be about them, it would be about their contribution. Uh, for me, I would rank him number one because for that short time that he was here, he was one of the key parts that allowed us to be successful in the two years that we dominated the National Football League. You won't find a team with the statistics that we have in existence today and one of those reasons is because Paul Warfield was a great part of that. Uh, when he becomes that kind of a threat outside, and that, uh, the kind of threat that they can do nothing about. Uh, it just depends on w whether or not the, the, the guy who's guarding him, if he's good, then he may have a shot, but not likely. If he's not good, you might not even see him in the picture. <laughs>